Hit the subscribe button or visit us at auau.auanet.org. Technical considerations for a horseshoe kidney and a posteriorly occurring renal mass. The use of intravenous endocyanin green and fourth arm in robot-assisted partial nephrectomy. The patient is a 65-year-old female who underwent a workup at an outside institution for abdominal pain. A CT scan revealed a 6-centimeter left renal mass in a horseshoe kidney. The patient's medical history, surgical history, physical exam, and laboratory values are listed below. Workup at our institution included a CT angiogram of the abdomen and pelvis, which demonstrated a horseshoe kidney with isthmus at the level of the IMA. A 5.6 centimeter posteriorly occurring enhancing renal mass was detected on the left lower pole of the horseshoe kidney, worrisome for carcinoma. Assessment of the renal vasculature revealed a single renal vein with a more distal insertion point to the IVC and two renal arteries originating from the aorta. Renal artery number one located superiorly and renal artery number two located more inferiorly. Laparoscopic partial nephrectomy was the initial recommendation offered prior to a second opinion. After a lengthy discussion of risk and benefits, the patient opted to undergo robotic-assisted partial nephrectomy. Ports were placed in our standard configuration for a left-sided robotic partial nephrectomy. The patient was placed in a right flank position and the table was put in full flexion. After pneumoperitoneum was established, a 12mm port for the assistant is placed periambilically. The abdominal cavity was then visually inspected with a zero-degree camera. Four robotic ports were placed straight along the left paramedian line under direct visualization, with one hand breath between each port. We start with mobilization of the descending colon from Gerota's fascia. A fourth arm grasping retractor was applied early in this procedure for improved exposure. The renal hilum was located and dissected for access to renal vasculature. capsule and aorta were identified. Renal artery number one and number two are shown originating off the aorta. The left kidney was fully mobilized lateral to the isthmus. This included all attachments to both Gerota's fascia and perirenal fat. A Hitachi Aloka drop-in ultrasound probe was used to delineate the borders of the renal mass. Monopolar electrocautery was used to outline the borders. Prior to arterial clamping, intravenous mannitol was given by anesthesia. Renal artery number 2 was selectively clamped with a bulldog clamp. ICG was given, demonstrating continued perfusion of the renal mass. For this reason, renal artery number one was also clamped. The renal capsule was incised using cold scissors. Large caliber vessels within the resection bed were controlled with absorbable clips. The tumor was enucleated with a visually appreciated negative margin and put aside for later extraction.
resection base was closed using a 3-0 V-lock suture and absorbable clips. All visible bleeding vessels and collecting system entries were oversewn. Bulldog clamps were removed and no significant bleeding was seen from the resection bed. Renorophy was completed using a second 3-0 V-lock suture and closed in a running horizontal mattress manner using absorbable clips. Prior to completion of the renorphy, tissue was applied to the resection bed. After closure of Gerota's fascia, no drain was left. Total console time was 157 minutes, with 19 minutes of warm ischemia time. Estimated blood loss was 300 milliliters. Pathology revealed a 5.7 centimeter oncocytoma confirmed with immunohistochemistry. Patient was discharged on post-op day one.